In today's video, we're gonna talk about seven year-end tax strategies, year-end planning items that you should consider before the end of the year. So whether you're still working or already retired, these strategies can help put you in the best position possible for not only this year, but years going forward. We're gonna talk about strategies to help save you money, help save you on tax dollars, to help maybe get you more tax-free money. We're also gonna talk about what to do to potentially avoid penalties before the end of the year. We're releasing this video in October because December 31st will be right around the corner. And a lot of these strategies have a December 31st deadline. So really important. Also stick around to the end. I've got a little bonus item for you. Um, I find a lot of people don't like a tax surprise or a surprise come next April during tax time. And so we're gonna talk about what to do to help avoid a surprise, but again, something that you wanna look into before the end of the year. Thanks for joining our YouTube channel. I'm Scott Searns. I run a retirement planning and investment management firm where we help families and individuals, people just like you, maximize their retirement story by helping them maximize what they can spend and minimize the taxes that they pay to the IRS. If this is something that you need help with, go to lifemoneyshow.com, click on the work with us tab. Number one, review your retirement plan contributions and update them accordingly. All retirement plan contributions have to be made by the end of the year, by December 31st. Now, let me just walk you through some examples of where this can come into play and how this can become important. Let's just say you got a bonus or an increase in pay, or you just see that you're going to have a surplus in your accounts by the end of the year. And you're thinking, oh man, I'd love some more tax-free money for my future. Well, this could be your chance before the end of the year to put more money into your Roth 401k. You pay that tax today, but you get that tax-free money for your future. So upping your contributions for these last few months to get as much in there as you possibly can based on whatever you see coming forward. Or maybe you're hitting new tax brackets this year because of increases in pay. Maybe you're now going over that 24% bracket or you're going into those 30% brackets. Well, then maybe what you want to do is put more towards your regular 401k and get the tax deduction. Get that money back out of those high tax brackets and just take the tax deduction, pay tax on it later. So there's a way to get more tax deferred money, more tax deductions by the end of the year, increasing your 401k contributions. Also, just taking a look, if you're somebody who normally maximizes your 401k or Roth 401k contributions, well, by the end of the year, um, make sure you do a review and make sure that you're actually maximizing those contributions. Sometimes companies will limit what you can put in, so that way you're not going over the limits, but then you need to work with them to actually make sure that you're maxing it out. So all this applies to those 401ks, 403bs, 457s, all the company-sponsored retirement plans. You want to do the review and then update accordingly. And the last one here, the most important one, maybe you're not maxing things out, maybe you're not seeing a surplus or an increase to be able to put together extra, but are you at least getting the company match? That's really important. So if you need to, what is your company match? And then take a look at what you need to do with your contributions over these next few months here, if you need to increase them, whatever it might be. So that way you're getting the full company match before the end of the year. Number two, also with a December 31st deadline is should you be considering Roth conversions? Roth conversions is where you take money from your IRA, 401k, pay tax on it today and shift it over to your Roth IRA where then it grows tax-free and you can make withdrawals tax-free in the future. So why should you be looking at this considering it? Well, again, that year-end deadline, maybe you're in a low, maybe you're right now you have low taxable income. So if you have low taxable income, it might make sense for you to pay that tax today and shift that money over. Maybe you think that your tax brackets will be higher in the future than where they're at today. If so, should be considering that Roth conversion. Maybe um, you're worried about the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act expiring. Current tax laws and tax rates are set to expire the end of uh, 2025. If so, might be considering a Roth conversion. I also look at Roth conversions as a very strategic thing to do. You're not just converting all of your IRA money over to Roth money. Um, you wanna go up to certain tax brackets 
but not go over? And if so, Roth conversions can take many years to complete um, to do it at that lower tax rates, lower taxable income. And so if so, this is something that you really want to consider and do before the end of the year. By now, you've got a really good idea where you're going to sit from an income standpoint this year. So you can factor all of that in, understand how much of a Roth conversion you can do and do it before the end of the year. Take advantage of your low taxable income years and you should be looking at considering a, a Roth conversion. As always, I like to mention with Roth conversions, speak with a financial professional and a tax professional before you go and do so. So strategy number three that you might wanna consider before the end of the year is a backdoor Roth IRA contribution. Now, I know what you might be thinking, wait a second, the IRA, the Roth IRA contributions, those are typically the tax filing deadline next April that you have to, to make those contributions. But you see, if you're a high income earner and you can't make a normal contribution to a Roth IRA, well, you might need to make a backdoor Roth IRA contribution. And a backdoor Roth IRA contribution includes a Roth conversion or which needs to be completed before the end of this year to make all of that happen and to get your Roth contribution Again, backdoor Roth contribution done prior to 1231 if you want to get it to count for this year's taxes. So you can't get your money normally into the Roth IRA. You need to do the backdoor contribution before December 31st. Before I get to four through seven and the bonus item, I'm guessing if you're watching this video, you're like a lot of our clients who want to reduce, help reduce the taxes that they pay to the IRS and keep more of their hard earned money in their accounts, again, versus paying it in taxes. If so, download our free guide to unlocking hidden tax savings opportunities. You can get it at lifemoneyshow.com forward slash taxes. Again, that's lifemoneyshow.com forward slash taxes, and we'll include a link in the description below. All right, the fourth strategy to help put yourself in the best position possible before the end of the year is charitable gifting. Two parts to this one. One, what are you doing from a charitable gifting standpoint? You don't have to do anything, but if you are doing something, make sure you take a look at it and is there any updates you should be making before the end of the year? And then two, how you're charitable gifting. So maybe you are able to itemize your taxes. If not, then maybe there's some other things that you need to consider. Should you be considering a donor advised fund? Or, you know, we work with a lot of retirees. If you are age 70 and a half and older, I highly recommend considering doing your charitable gifting through the Qualified Charitable Distribution Process, QCD. I'll include a link um, above to a video on the QCD process. Number five, utilizing the annual gifting exclusion. So maybe you want to help out your children or grandchildren or someone else and you want to gift them some money. Well, every year there's a limit of how much that you can gift to somebody without having to fill out any sort of tax form. So utilizing this again before December 31st allows you to utilize this year's limit and then the clock resets on January 1st where you can give to them again next year without having to fill out any sort of tax forms. Again, up to the limit, but not over. The other thing to consider is maybe you just have money in your accounts that you don't plan to use. You know it's going to pass down as a legacy, but for you, it's causing taxable income each and every year. Maybe it's causing dividends or interest that's adding to your overall taxes. Well, you can utilize this annual gifting exclusion to gift that down. If it's going to go as a legacy anyway, gift that down, get it out of your taxable income and give it to somebody, your, you know, again, child or grandchild, if that was the intended purpose for it in the future anyways. So that way they can begin utilizing and putting it to work now. Now there's a whole nother thing about how you can educate them and help them and help them realize what you're doing for them, making sure that it's getting put towards, you know, something good. But that's not today's topic. Today's topic is what can you do before the end of the year to help put yourself in the best position possible or just financial strategies to be able to utilize? Number six is tax loss and tax gain harvesting. Let me go through the, the different thoughts here between the two. Let's just say you're in a very low taxable income year. Um, and all of this is in regards to like a non-retire, your non-retirement investment accounts. Again, the non-retirement investment accounts. So you're in a low taxable income bracket this year. You look at your investment account. Maybe you have a security, a stock, something in there that has really appreciated in value. Well, you might want to do what they call tax gain harvesting. Low taxable income year, 
you sell some of that stock that's really gained in price and you recognize those gains at a lower long-term capital gains bracket. So it could be tax gain harvesting. You're recognizing gains. Heck, you might be able to recognize gains at a 0% long-term taxable gains bracket. It all depends on your situation. The other then is tax loss harvesting. Now with tax loss harvesting, maybe you're seeing you've got some losses in your non-retirement investment account. As long as if you sell that position, recognize the losses. Now don't get in the same position. You have to just get into a, a similar position. Go through all the rules before you do this. But if you get into a similar position, now you have losses that you'd be able to write off on your taxes. Again, all that needs to be done before the end of the year because January 1st, the clock resets on new losses and gains for your account. And just one more thing to be aware of, there are caps to the amount of um, money that you can write off from investment losses each and every year. All right, before we get into our bonus item, number seven is taking your required minimum distributions. I know this might not be a tax strategy item, but it is one that's going to help you avoid unnecessary penalty. So make sure if you have a beneficiary IRA or if you have a regular IRA, 401k, 403b, and you're in your 70s, make sure you're taking your required minimum distributions because if you fail to do so, you could incur a penalty for failing to take those required minimum distributions. Hey, I hope that you've really been enjoying this video. And if you want to see additional videos on retirement planning topics, how to help minimize the taxes that you pay to the IRS, helping to maximize your social security, subscribe to our YouTube channel as we're continuing to come out with new videos on retirement planning topics just like those each and every week. All right, today's bonus item. The last thing that you want to consider before the end of the year is doing a tax projection in a federal withholding review. You see, when we have taxable income coming in, when you're working, each and every year we've got taxable income coming in that we're going to owe tax on. If you're working, they're withholding federal tax from your paycheck. Or maybe you're somebody who's making quarterly payments in each and every year. Well, I find come April, people would like to get a refund or a small refund or owe nothing in April when they when they fill, you know, when they fill out their taxes. But the last thing that they would typically want to do is owe money. Because a lot of times when we owe money, it's a surprise. And sometimes people aren't ready for that. Uh, for example, I had a, a client who got a great, nice bonus during the year. But when they got that bonus, their company didn't withhold enough taxes from that bonus. Now, what we did was a tax projection before the end of the year. And we saw that the company didn't withhold enough money. So we were able to show them, hey, here's what you're going to owe come next April. So that way it wasn't a surprise. But if you're not doing that tax projection, sometimes come April, you might have a surprise. So do it up front. Do it by the end of the year. That way you know how much you'll owe in taxes. You'll know if you've already got enough paid in, whether you're going to owe, whether you're going to get a refund. The other thing that this helps with is that if you haven't paid in enough, we want to make sure that you avoid any sort of underpayment penalty. So for the end of the year, highly recommend do a tax projection. Look at how much you've withheld or already paid in for taxes. Do the two of them line up? Are you going to owe or are you going to get a refund? Try to avoid those surprises. It makes next April a lot easier to go through. Again, hope that you found this video to be of value. If so, subscribe to our new our YouTube channel. And I look forward to helping you out in our next video.